friends, welcome to Prime Strings. I'm Henriette and today we are practicing Riedings Concertino in B minor opus 35 and this is a popular one. Some of you have requested uh, for me to uh, create videos on this concertino and lots of my pupils also play it so it's for all of you out there including my own pupils. So um, I'll play you the first section first and then we'll work on section by section and we'll gradually go through the first movement. Let me play you the tuning notes first. I'll start on A. or a dotted crotchet and a quaver or a minim or even a crotchet and two quavers every two beats together get the whole bow and that way you can make a really full sound and when you do that I want you to practice pointing your bow arm forwards as you bow so as opposed to going like this where you lose the contact with the bow on the string so stretch your bow arm in this direction so that by the end of the bow stroke, your hand is literally in front of your tummy, right here. Okay, so that way you can keep contact with the bow on the strings right there, which is when you go like that with your arm, your bow is slipping and you don't get such a good sound, you see. So in bar one, I want you to really stretch that pinky out here. Make it really nice and sharp. And what you can do to help your pinky is to get your thumb to come upright here. And when your thumb is up, it encourages your wrist to come out like that. And that way you can reach your pinky. Look what happens if my thumb moves back. And what happens to my wrist? What does that do to my pinky? You're not going to get high enough, you see. So look at this. Can you see that come back in shape? So that's what you want to do. Move your thumb up or at least start with your thumb up upright. Just peeking over the edge there. Okay, so let's try this again. You can join in with me. One, two, three, four. subdivide into three quaver notes so you perhaps you heard me count one two three let's do that again two three now we get the same rhythm one two three and this is a nice 
nice bar, this first bar of the second line, because you can hear your subdivision, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the speed of the quavers continues without speeding up or slowing down. Although this A sharp here for most people is a really, really challenging note. Now, if you look back at the B that comes before the A sharp, which is the last note of the first line in my copy, that's your B. Now, the A sharp you want to create by moving your first finger up so that it touches the second finger that you've just played. So if I start on the last bar of the first line, My first finger is right underneath that second finger. So there's your gauge. You can use this as your marker, your second finger, uh, to find out where your first finger should go. Okay, let's now go back to the beginning and let's join it all up and then we'll carry on a little bit further, shall we? After four. So let's get your thumb in gear. One, two, three, four. second line. We've done the A sharp but now there comes a C sharp and the C sharp is a whole tone away from a B. B is the second finger, C sharp is a space away. So if I play the second line first bar, big gap now. So that's your finger pattern there, can you see that? just in that bar. Now the A sharp at the beginning of this bar is an accidental. It's not normally part of our key signature. And this accidental A sharp lasts until the bar line, which means that when you see the group of four semiquavers, that A is also an A sharp, you see? So this one, this note is still being influenced by the A sharp at the beginning of the bar. Let's just practice that bar again, all together, and... Do it one more time, and... Okay, now can you make sure that you play two long bows on each half of this bar? So stretch your bow arm forward, and... Yes, there it's coming! Well done you! Okay, so we'll do this bar one more time and then we'll carry on. And... Wow, that's coming together. Now take a look at the third bar of the second line. There you've got a C sharp, this one. Now this note that's coming up, that one, is a G natural. So your second finger is not in the same place as where you had it previously on the A string, but it's now close together. So I want you to really work on that. So wide, sec a wide second finger first. Now place your second finger close to the first one. Um, we're playing um, with the second fingers wide on the A string, but close on the E string throughout. Now let's carry on, shall we?
here that you've just um, at the start of line four you have played a C sharp so your third finger on the G string was wide then when your third finger comes on the D string next bear in mind that it's close together to the second finger so you need to give directions to that third finger and make sure that it doesn't fall wide here by accident that is a very common thing that people come across that they want to play it too sharp so place your third finger right by the side of the second finger if you can't manage that perhaps you can just check for me that your fingers aren't flat like that and you need to have your fingers upright so that your third finger comes on its fingertip right by the side of the second finger okay we're starting again at the start of line four one two three four So check out your right elbow and your right elbow should always precede the string crossing. So when I'm playing here on the D string, whilst I'm playing this I'm dropping my elbow down a little bit so that I'm preparing for the string crossing onto the A string. So I'm going, see my elbow going and that makes my string crossing really smooth going from the D string to the A string. So shall we try that a couple of times? So your elbow is level with the D string. Here it goes. Can you see it go down? If I didn't do that, you can listen to what it sounds like now. So this time I'm deliberately doing it wrong, mind. See, you get a really hard movement, a really strong, sudden change to the third finger on the A string and we don't want that this is super smooth music it's really delicate and and nice sounding so therefore you want to make that string crossing as smooth as you possibly can good job that's an important aspect of violin playing is making your string crossings very smooth now let's carry on now and more straightforward than the section that has gone before. All I want to say is when you play this, this last bar here is after the open A string here make an extra effort to put all your fingers down at the same time on the A string here so that your fingers one and two support the third finger there. Shall we try that one more time? And And then we'll carry on and that you want to make as smooth as you can so rather than going a very abrupt crossing of the strings you are going to have to precede your elbow again so you're playing on the A string and I'm dropping my elbow down so that you can almost see I'm hovering closer towards the E string while I play the B and how do I do that? by just dropping my elbow down. I'm imagining I'm drawing a little half circle. If you imagine there be, being a little chalk on the end of my elbow, I'm just drawing a little crescent shape in the air with my elbow. Look, I'm doing it right here. 
Here he comes. Can you see it go down? We're coming together now, that's nice. So when you're on the sixth line, stretch that fourth finger again for your B. Here, mind you've got a D natural there, so your fingertip is your finger is on its fingertip, can you see? But then afterwards, you want to stretch this third finger. So you want already to stretch it while you play the B. Look, can you see my finger moves? Check it out when I'm playing this. Can you see I'm preparing that third finger to come down there? So you've noticed a couple of times now in this piece, I'm, I'm preparing for what comes next. So I'm always on my guard to know what follows. So whether it is my string crossing, so in the note before the string crossing, I drop my elbow down. Here, in the note before my stretched third finger, I'm always, I'm already beginning to stretch my finger. And it is, so you need to practice uh, all the things that are coming up. Um, this is why sight reading is so difficult. One of the one of the reasons why sight reading is so difficult because you you don't know what's coming up. But when you practice, practice with these things in mind so that you're going to prepare what comes next. Right, we have now come to the piano section. So we're going to shorten our bow strokes a little bit to get a little bit more quiet. <laughs> shorter you remember when we started playing we used a whole bow for every half bar now we're going to go and bow a little bit more towards the middle of the bow okay so that we get softer notes of course then we get the accents and the accents are little little pushes on the bow within the piano so don't make them massively big because your overall dynamic is still piano so just a gentle little nudge on the accents. Shall we do that again from piano? Three, four. Okay. Now some of you will already have noticed when you play the fourth finger on the new line. Try to place your third finger at the same time. So we're going. Two fingers together. Place two fingers together. Place two fingers together. So again here it's a matter of knowing what's coming up. And that is what you practice in your practice. You work on these things and you see if you can memorise all those little bits that are going to make your playing a lot better. So you're doing great, you're improving all the time. Now this time I'm going to go from the piano section and we're going straight off. Three, four. increase the length of our bow during the two bars just gone and now you can play really loud and make your accents much bigger too because your accents in the music here are within the forte so not within the piano as you've done before so we're now suddenly loud with massive accents here we go on the risoluto bar 
three, four. And you might actually put both fingers down together. Now you've got to really direct this second finger because in the bar before your second finger has been on C sharp on the A string. Okay, so let's play the last line of page one and for one little comment here. I am assuming that you have at this stage in your learning not yet learned how to play vibrato and that is a good thing because you shouldn't really be learning to play vibrato unless your tuning is absolutely spotless. Okay. However, if you have already learned to play vibrato, uh, there is another vibrato video or if you want to learn it as well, there is a vibrato video somewhere on this channel, so look on the technical um, videos, uh, you can learn to play vibrato with me as well. Okay, so take a look at the last bar of the first page, because here you go from the G string to the A string. Now, we have said before when you play string crossings and you make them really smooth you pretend you put a little chalk in the end of your elbow and you do that you make a nice crescent shape outline with that little chalk in the air you pretend to do that and here is such a place as well you can do the same thing on the g-string my elbow is higher now take a look at the curve that my elbow makes here okay so you go like that and you end up on the a string rather than going like this you probably hear the difference don't you so my elbow just gently curves around there and that gives you really nice um, string crossings there so try to avoid going also with your wrist okay you see it doesn't get smooth it gets smoother when you use larger joints, larger muscle groups. Okay, so let's now pick it up from the second page on the C sharp. One, two. Similar place here for string crossing to make it smooth. this bit. So we're counting to four on the semi quavers. One, two, three, four. And now I'm going to keep on counting in the same style. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You see, so I'm subdividing all of the notes here into quavers. Because the quavers, we know the speed of the quavers because we've just played them here. Now you keep counting those quavers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Okay. So 
so long as you keep subdividing those dotted crotchets and crotchets into quavers, you're going to be all right. Now, that's one thing, that because there are there is a lot going on in this section here. So when we play the A here, the A leads to the A sharp, and that leads to the B. So let's just practice those notes first. So here you've got the A. Check in with your A string. Those two A's should be a matching pair. So you can check the tuning there. Now A sharp. And B. And that line you want to make more obvious in your playing. That, li that line should really come out to make it more attractive to listen to. So this time, I'm going to start on the second bar of the top of page two, and... That's it, and you can also see an accent being printed on the B. I have placed accents actually on all three of those notes, both on A, A sharp, out that line a bit more clearly. Do it one more time and then we'll carry on. And actually here I should say something to you. Uh, when you see the C sharp and the D that with the fourth finger because it's slurred and when it, when two notes are slurred they they are indicated to be more much more smooth and if you cross the strings although it's probably easier to play and I noticed I did it I did the same thing earlier on that if you've noticed um, but it's much nicer and much better technique if you use a fourth finger on that D <laughs> run once more from the first finger on the G string for one As you can so I suggest let's just check over your bow hold there are other videos about bow hold as well but let's just check it over and get the best one that you can find with your thumb bent underneath your little finger nice and curved on the side edge there and here we go three four so on I would like you to check that you leave your bow down at all times on the strings here it will just interrupt your, the flow of your music a lot if you make a habit of lifting your bow off the strings. so for instance and this is wrong and some people have a habit of doing that Please, can that not be you? Because that is just not such a nice style. And here you can practice it. Practice leaving your bow on the string. We're doing this whole section again. So if you've lost me, that's totally understandable. I'm starting on the fourth line in the third bar. And that is page, the second page, of course, isn't it? Three, four. <laughs> Carry on. 
well done if you've followed me all the way through. I don't think in that last section there are many new things to be talking about. One thing that I should say perhaps is that um, there is a little game going on between the high and low second fingers on the A string and also on the E string. In, on the E string in fact they are always low but on the, on the A string C sharps and C's just be very very careful. I suggest we'll do it one more time and we're starting um, on the, if you count back from the end, uh, three lines up and then one bar. So we're starting, I haven't got bar numbers which is a bit annoying. So we're starting from, let's start three lines from the end shall we, the last three lines. It's a bit of a silly place to start but it's easier to find. So here we start on the low second finger on E. Okay, so have your first and second fingers already on the string. Three, four. Actually, there is something to say here. And that is when you play this, prepare your fourth finger while you play the first finger. Have a fourth finger here. And here, when you've got an up bow here, you remember we were talking about uh, string crossings with your elbow. Now this time you go from the A string to the D string. So lift your elbow up and you'll find yourself suddenly playing on the D string. So let's do that again, shall we? Up bow on the C sharp. And again. And again. And now we'll carry on. Okay, and when we're going here, we were there. Drop your elbow down again because we're going to the A string. So let's practice. 